Hello, hello, my name is Chris Callahan, and I want to say a big hello to everybody in year four at the International Community School in Abu Dhabi. Well, I am speaking here from London in England, so it is great to speak to everybody in Abu Dhabi. That's very exciting for me. Now, I am speaking to you because Mr. Sargent has been in touch with me and told me that you have been reading a book called The Great Chocoplot. Well, I am Chris Callahan. I am the person who has written this story. So, first of all, thank you very much for reading my story. I hope you've had some fun reading it. Um, I've been hearing, I've been seeing some of your photographs as well. Mr. Sergeant has sent me a lot of photographs with some of you holding up some questions. And I'm going to answer some of those questions, or at least try to answer some of those questions. But thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've maybe had a sneaky few little little bits of chocolate while you've been reading it as well there eh? because it does make your tummy rumble the thought of no more chocolate <gasps> I hope it hasn't given you chocolate nightmares but I hope you've had a little bit of extra chocolate just to make you feel a little bit better it's got to be done hasn't it reading and chocolate it goes so well together so brilliant thank you thank you that's very exciting for me to hear that so I've got some of your questions here so here we go right First question is, when did you start writing books? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I mean, I mean The Great Chocopot is actually my very first book that's been published. But I've always wrote stories. Ever since I was your age, I used to write stories because I just enjoyed writing stories. And I'll show you one of my earliest versions of a, me attempting to write a book. Here it is called Wonder Boys by Christopher Callahan. And I've, you know, tried to make it into a kind of a book form. It's a very simple book, but, you know, and I've, I've got the first chapter there. And it's, you know, it's not very brilliant you know but it's uh, it's got lots of spelling mistakes and lots of mistakes in there I've even tried doing a little bit of illustration there as well I don't know if you can see that yes I mean but I just used to enjoy writing it I mean this is about a, a couple of boys called the Wonder Boys who who make a time machine and they um and they go off into it and they have crazy adventures or at least that was the plan I'm not sure if I ever wrote anything more than chapter one but uh, but I was always scribbling things like this so this is something that you can do you know it doesn't have to be a book that ends up in a in a bookshop or a library you know you can create your own stories and maybe create your own books but I have always always loved writing stories but I've done lots of other things as well I used to be in the military I used to be an environmental scientist but I was always you know in between you know having brave or afterwards or before writing stories uh, right so next question is how many days did it take you to write the story oh, well that's a very technical question how many days how many days oh lots and lots of days too many days to count i mean i don't know um i mean i suppose i first had the idea and then i it, it from having the idea to having it published was about three years three years can you imagine that so you know maybe if i had a few days off here and there three days three years oh that's about maybe maybe about a thousand days oh that does sound like a lot doesn't it it's a thousand days to write to write a book like that i mean i don't know maybe i was i was a bit slow i don't know some people write books in in different kind of lengths some people can do it in a few months some people take years and years i don't know but anyway it took me a little while anyway but that's a very technical question that isn't it another question i've got here did i always want to be an author in the first place oh that's a good question and um, well i mean i as i said i always enjoyed writing but i i didn't really even dream really of becoming an author i maybe teased myself with the idea of one day you know being an author but you know i i come from a, a small town in the north of england and you know a lot of people would you know from my town it used to be a shipbuilding town it used to be a town on, on near a river and used to build these huge big ships and a lot of people from my school all went to do this and i thought that i'd maybe end up doing this but the shipyards kind of closed down a little bit so 
that work wasn't there. So I became, I joined the military. I became an aircraft engineer. I've got some pictures behind me there of some of the aircraft that I worked on when I was in the in the Royal Air Force. So, um, so yes, so did I always dream about being an author? Yes, I forgot what the question was then. <laughs> um, so no, so I think while I was always doing this, I, I maybe... You know, I used to just write stories. I think it's it's perfectly okay to enjoy writing stories without ever becoming an author. You know, you can share those stories with your family, your friends, or just for the pure enjoyment of it. But um, but I'm certainly glad I did become an author because I do really love writing and getting you know getting a little bit of paid, getting paid for it as well, a little bit anyway. Um, right, another question we've got here. Um, if the chocolate was gone. What would you do? <gasps> well, yeah, well, I suppose that's the subject of the book, isn't it? When they're all worrying about chocolate running out, well, what would I do? <gasps> I think I'd be a bit rubbish. I'd just run around. Ah, ah, ah. I'd be a bit of, bit of, a bit of crying. You know, sitting in the corner, going, oh, there's no more chocolate, no more chocolate left. Ah, I don't know. I, th I, I would like to think I wouldn't steal anybody else's chocolates. Yes, I hope so. But um, I'm not sure if I would share my chocolates. I, you know, I've got, a, I've got a very nice family and I would like to think that I might share my chocolate with them. But, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think I would maybe try, try and keep it to myself or at least go in a cupboard somewhere and, um, and just munch the last bit of chocolate myself maybe it's not very nice though is it no i would hopefully i would share it but yes i would be a bit rubbish i wouldn't be as good as jelly she was quite quite you know focused she knew what she was doing so um so, so i wonder what you would do hey eh? um right then uh, another question is who give you the inspiration to write about chocolate oh right well do you know what i think i mean the first idea i came from was when me and my daughter we pulled up and open our kitchen drawer where we used to keep all the chocolate in and there was no chocolate left and I says oh it's a bit of a, a chocolate apocalypse a bit of a choc apocalypse and that's where this idea of the choc apocalypse came from and then I thought you know I started having all these different ideas so I thought well I'll write this story and I'll write this story for my daughter so I suppose she was my inspiration to write this story. She give, you know, she she had a, she was my audience first of all for for her to maybe enjoy the story. So that's that's all it was meant to be at first, just a, a bedtime story to read with her. And now it's gone all the way across the world to Abu Dhabi. Isn't that amazing? So yes, yeah, so my daughter I suppose was my inspiration. Um, how did you get so creative to be able to write this book? Oh, now that's a good question, isn't it? Now, now I mean, I think that ideas are everywhere. You know, you look around your classroom and your school or your homes and do, or doing whatever it is you're doing and ideas are everywhere. As I said, I showed you, as I told you, um, I pulled open a drawer and there was no chocolate there and then an idea sprung into my head. So I think, you know, ideas do sometimes just suddenly hit you, but sometimes you have to dig around for them a little bit. You know, sometimes, you know, when you have to, because when you're writing a long story, you have to have lots and lots and lots of ideas. So you have to sit down and I mean, I always have a, you know, a notebook nearby and I, I you know, I, I'm always scribbling different things in, in that whenever something pops into my head that I could use later on. So you always, you know, keep a notebook nearby. If you do have an idea, scribble it down and you might use it sometimes. So, but sometimes you do, you just have to sit there and you have to think and think and think. So sometimes it does, it does take a little while, but it's worth doing it. Sometimes it can be hard work, but I, th I think ideas are everywhere. You've just got to keep an eye out for them but that's a great question right and now i've got a, a, a few more questions one of you had a, a load of questions to answer um to ask <laughs> which is very nice um uh, one of these questions was how old was i when i wrote the story <gasps> Well, I'm not sure. Is that a little bit rude, asking how old somebody is? No, I don't. Well, I don't know. Um, how old was I? Well, when I first started writing, and I suppose I was maybe about, you know, 44, 45, maybe-ish, you know. So I was, you know, and that was my first book. So I was maybe, you know, quite late into this world of writing books. And that, so that means, you know, you don't always have to go straight into it. You know, as you leave school, you don't have to suddenly become an author. You can do lots and lots of other things and maybe later in in your life you could become an author you just you just never know you never know so i was maybe a bit of a late starter in terms of writing books but i've always written stories 
Um, how many books have I written? Well, The Great Chocolate Pot was my first book and it is my only novel, my only real long book. But recently I've written a whole series of other books called Shinoi and the Chaos Crew. I mean, these are only some of them. I've written 24 short stories about this young boy who has a, an app on his phone and he, and he has a favourite TV programme called The Chaos Crew and when he presses the button his favourite TV characters come into his world and they have lots and lots of crazy adventures and these have been recently released and they're slowly starting to find their way out into the world so maybe you might have a little look around ask your teachers to see if you can find Shinoi and the Chaos Crew and I've also just released as well Shinoi and the Chaos Crew graphic novel Novels. So there's, um, you know, sort of comics, you know, and this has been brilliant. I, you know, these have been written, um, uh, uh, illustrated by a wonderful illustrator called Amit Tial. And there's some fantastic illustrations in there. So I've had a lot of fun, um, you know, writing these stories. And again, full of action, full of adventure, full of drama. So, um, so, so in total, I have written 30 books now. A lot of them very short ones like these. But um, but yes, but 30 books. That's amazing. I am, I'm really pleased, really pleased with that. But um, right, but that's a great question. Um, now, another question you asked is, why did you write the story for your daughter? Well, I suppose I've already answered that one a little bit, wasn't it? I We opened up a drawer and, um, and discovered the chocolate had run out. Um, so that's why I wrote it for her. And you ask, does she like chocolate? <gasps> well. There's not many people who doesn't like chocolate. I love chocolate. I'm sure most of you love chocolate there as well. Yes, she loves chocolate. And I think that's why it made it particularly <gasps> dramatic. You know, the thought of chocolate running out for her. She was a bit horrified by that. And I think, as, a, as you know, when you're trying to write a story, you've got to make it full of drama, full of problems, full of action. So, um, so that's what I try to do. Um, your last question was, how old is she? <laughs> Well, she's now 16, but when I wrote it for her, first of all, she was eight. So she would have been, you know, maybe a similar age to, to yourselves there. Right now, the very last question I've got here is, will there ever be a movie about the Great Chocker Plot? Because it would be amazing. Oh, my word, wouldn't that be amazing? I think that's almost everybody's dream. You know, anybody who writes a story or writes a book, you know, I mean, because I, I love films. I love movies. You know, I am. Um, oh, I'm big fan of films and anyway there's a big I don't know if you can see my poster there Raiders of the Lost Ark I mean that's one of my favorite favorite films so yes it would be wonderful and I mean I maybe can't say too much here but it has been talked about um I mean things have maybe been put on hold because of everything that's happened but fingers crossed if you all you know enjoyed the great chocolate plot and you tell everybody this is a great book it would make a great film maybe the right people might hear you say that but um it has been talked about and we'll see keep your fingers crossed and let's let's really really hope because i would love that that would be brilliant but i'm very happy for it to be a book and i'm very excited that it has gone all the way to international community school in abu Darby. So thank you very much. And keep an eye on Mr. Sergeant, okay? I know you like your chocolate, but don't let your chocolate too too near him because it might go missing because he likes chocolate a little bit too much, do you think? Yeah. But thank you very much for all those questions and for sending me those photographs. They have been brilliant. It is very exciting for me to be able to speak to you from England. So thank you very much. Keep on reading and keep on having chocolate. Take care now.